Right, so today we're looking at part five of 34-year-old Mike and his 24-year-old Colombian girlfriend, Jimena. Two months ago, Mike visited Jimena in Colombia to meet her and her family for the first time after a year of speaking online. Unfortunately, it didn't go too smoothly. With the language barrier making things awkward, Jimena revealing secrets she had been keeping from Mike and Mike's gross habits making Jimena doubt the relationship. However, despite all of the uncertainty, Mike proposed and Jimena said yes. Two months later, Mike returned to Colombia uninvited ahead of their supposed wedding date in a month's time, and things have been going even worse for him this time around. Jimena refused to pick him up from the airport, stayed out clubbing on his first night in Colombia, and told him that his tendency to stare at her while she sleeps is so creepy that she doesn't want to even share a room with him anymore. On top of all of that, she has been asking Mike to pay for her to get liposuction and a boob job, and is now refusing to marry him until he does. After a lonely night in Juan Harold's race car bed, Mike is still hopeful that they can work out their differences. Today, he wants to finally sit down with Jimena and discuss their problems, but with confidence in his translator app running low, he asks his friend Nelsie, who speaks Spanish, if she can help them communicate so that nothing is lost in translation. She agrees, they video call her from a restaurant, and the first thing she does is ask Jimena why things seem to change after Mike first arrived in Colombia. Es como lo como que como lo que él actúa, como él es. Me acuesto a dormir y siento que alguien me está viendo y me despierto y él está ahí viéndome como bicho raro. O sea, no duerme él ni me deja dormir a mí, o sea, no puedo dormir. Entonces por eso me tocó en un cuarto que se vuelva a dormir en un cuarto aparte. Like a weird bug. Poor Mike's getting roasted and he doesn't even know it. Even Nelsie's having a little giggle at this one. And if that didn't make it clear enough to her where this is going, she goes on to ask Jimena what she likes about Mike, and although she starts off by saying that she did used to love him, she quickly follows it up by reading off a list of all of his gross habits that she absolutely hates, like his burping, his farting, leaving dirty clothes everywhere, trekking dog poop through her house, and of course, the whole staring at her while she's sleeping thing. Understandably, in return, Nelsie wants to know why Jimena continues to stay with Mike and accept his money, given she dislikes him so much. Si tú no quieres estar con él, no te da malo que tú hayas cogido todo el dinero que él te ha dado. No, eso, o sea, eso, gracias, porque, o sea, no trabajé, mis hijos lo tuvieron todo, pero yo puedo trabajar, normal, como hacía antes. Mike, you didn't tell me that before. Is that what you've been doing? Yes. So essentially, as we've mentioned before, Jimena was earning money as a cam girl when she first met Mike, but soon after, he told her that he'd pay for everything if she stopped. She made it clear in the last episode that she's financially a lot better off like this, and to be fair, you can't really blame her. If you have someone saying that they'll send you money, pay all your bills, and you can quit your job and spend more time with your kids, Who's saying no to that? But obviously, Jimena went on to realize that Mike hasn't really got much else to offer, which is why in the last video, she made it clear that the transactional relationship would only be worth it if he paid her more money. It was quite clear to Nelsie too that this was the case, even without her knowing about any of the other stuff. And so because she's Mike's friend, she doesn't want him to continue to be a part of it. I hope you stop paying for all her stuff. Yeah, she's literally disgusted by you and I don't think she's happy with you and I don't think that she has love for you. She's not there for the right reasons. Right. Getting Nelsie involved was actually a good move by Mike. She really softened the blow of the translation while still making it very clear that Jimena isn't interested. Not that it ever really sinks in with him, like she's been calling him weird, creepy and gross for months and he's still lingering worse than his own flatulence. But it's nice that he's got someone telling him that he needs to walk away from this now. I'm gonna give you the space that you want. Um, I just hope we could still talk and just be friends. Do you want this to be finished? No quiero, no quiero que eso se termine. Quédate y, y pues tratemos de solucionar esto. Miremos a ver qué pasa. Wow, that is not how I expected that to go. Jimena's gone from telling him not to come and seeming disgusted with him, to telling him to stay like she wants to give him a chance. I wonder if she's genuinely hoping that Mike still might change, 
Or if she's still just thinking about doing what's best for her kids. Well, although they've just hugged it out, the reconciliation is about to get flipped on its head instantly. But first, given they've just used a Mac to call Nelsie, I just wanted to say a very quick thank you to today's sponsor, Clean My Mac. Clean My Mac X is the best app to clean and optimize your Mac, allowing you to delete megatons of junk, rid your Mac of malware, uninstall unused apps taking up vital space, optimize performance, increase the longevity of your Mac using five detailed health monitors and more, helping to make your Mac faster, safer and more organised. For me, having my Mac perform at its highest potential is so important. I script, record and edit all of my videos on it, so a sluggish Mac would mean constant frustration at work and a constantly delayed slow upload schedule. Thankfully, with Clean My Mac's optimization feature, I can keep my Mac performing at optimum speeds. On top of that, with my entire world being online, I need to make sure that I'm safe and protected with everything I do. And with the malware removal option, I can scan my Mac for viruses, adware, and even cryptocurrency miners and instantly remove them. I could not recommend this app more, so what are you waiting for? Clear up storage, check for malware, run optimization tasks, and much more with Clean My Mac X, which you can try for free right now using the link in the description down below. Thank you to Clean My Mac for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the drama. As Mike and Jimena leave the restaurant together following their reconciliation, Nelsie calls back and much to her frustration, Mike reveals that he and Jimena have made up. She doesn't deserve you being around and you don't deserve to be treated like that. No más. No más? No buena. Okay. Voy a Nueva York mañana? I cannot take this man seriously whilst he has his mask wrapped around his ears like that. He looks like something straight out of Lord of the Rings. Like they've accidentally crossbred an orc and a dwarf and cast some sort of incel spell on it. Also, he's given quite a judgmental look to Jimena now he's got someone backing him up, but they've almost certainly only heard one side of the story, haven't they? I mean, I can't imagine he's been telling them stories of him farting on top of her or burping at the dinner table or leaving his skid mark stained underwear all over the house. So Jimena's behaviour to Nelsie and her mum must just seem to have come from absolutely nowhere. That being said though, it's not as if his feelings are unjustified, is it? Jimena making it this clear she's repulsed by him and making him feel this unwelcome, but still stringing him along in a relationship is unfair on the guy, regardless of how gross he actually is. I mean, if he was my friend, I'd be saying get out of there too. <laughs> Nelsie once again repeats to Mike that Jimena isn't interested in him and is actively disgusted by him. And she says that if she's telling him anything different, it's because she wants him to pay for stuff. Nelsie's mum also jumps in to say that she's been sending messages around the Dominican Republic looking for a new girl for him. And she tells him that nobody deserves to be treated the way he's being treated. As a result, he really does threaten to leave and it soon becomes apparent that Jimena doesn't actually care as little as she makes out. I may or may not just stay in a hotel tonight. Porque tu amiguita te lo dijo. No. Sí. No. No. Ahora rato me dijiste que te ibas a quedar y llamó a tu amiguita la chismosa a decir haga esto y haga esto. Como si tú fueras un niño, tú no eres un niño. Tú puedes hacer y decidir por ti mismo. But that's still not going to change how I feel. I still feel. Todavía me siento como. I mean, of course he does. He's flown thousands of miles to come see his fiance and he's been made to feel as welcome as Big Ed at a feminist rally. She clearly knows how she's been treating him, but I think this is the first time he's expressed just how much it's hurting him. Hearing it out loud and hearing other people say it too probably made it sink in a little deeper. And it actually seems to make her realize that she has to compromise and change her ways a bit too if they're gonna make this work. You know what, I'm gonna be my own man and I'm, I'll stay in for another week. Okay. Okay. 
this plotline is nuts. It's like it was written by a really bad writer who can't figure out which way he wants the plot to go and can't remember how the characters are supposed to be feeling at any one time. Herman has gone from being disgusted by Mike to wanting to sleep with him and Mike's gone from wanting to leave because he's been treated so badly to wanting to stay in case there's a chance he can sleep with her. And there's no prize for guessing what happens next. Last night, when me and Amanda got home from the cafe, um, we went to bed in her bed with the kids, and then we snuck out, went to the kids' bed, and uh, guess who got lucky? No, Mike, stop thinking with little Mike. This is not a flex. You've been treated like trash for weeks and you've completely gotten over it because she gave you a crumb of Colombian spice. It's so shameless. And not only does he want to act like we're all going to be virtually high-fiving his sweaty little hands, he also wants to smugly sit there next to a manifestly unthrilled Jimena and subject us to toe-curlingly cringe reflections on the night's events. If you were an animal, I'd have to say you're a tiger. Si fueras un animal, tengo que decir que eres un tigre. <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind of animal was I last night? Um, pues como tú me miras tanto, pues como un búho. <laughs> Unreal. Their first night of intimacy together in almost three months, and the most memorable part of it for her was still him staring at her menacingly in the dark. I'm glad he was able to laugh that one off because that would have wounded me. Unfortunately for Mike, this high point isn't going to last long because Jimena is still bubbling up with anger on the inside. She's annoyed that he got his friends involved and told them all the drama. She's frustrated that all of their problems are being aired again, and she's been put off Mike even more by how he can't seem to make a decision by himself. Okay, pero tú y yo no vamos a dormir más juntos hasta el día que nos casemos. Mis hijos no duermen solos, yo voy a dormir con mis hijos y que no caemos todos cuatro en la cama. Cuando niños dormir, tú cama. Dormiré contigo después del matrimonio. This is actually getting silly now. When you guys said that this was a roller coaster, I expected a fair amount of up and downs, but this is ridiculous. They could literally be walking down the aisle in one clip, and I would not be surprised if Mike was on his knees in the next one, begging for a chance at redemption, because he farted halfway through her telling her vows. And also, I cannot believe he genuinely thought he was going to entice her into bed by giving her that creepy Kubrick stare all over again. I'm getting kind of like jerked around here. And at this point, I wonder if um, maybe I should have just listened to my friends and just come home and just forget about the whole thing. Listen, Mike's a man of many flaws, but on a real one, this is how trauma bonding develops. A constant cycle of devaluation and positive reinforcement psychologically causes people to develop stronger emotional connections, and that's not far off what's happening here. He's going from the highs of being intimate with her to being told that she doesn't love him or want to marry him, and back to being intimate with her again. I mean, it's certainly far from a severe case, but it's clearly causing Mike a lot of distress and confusion, and even Jimena's own mum is realising it. Pues ahí sí no sé qué decirle, May, porque pues he notado la diferencia de ella y todo, y pues me siento mal, porque pues tampoco he de ser uno tan frío. Y usted es una buena persona. Espero que ojalá se mejoren las cosas. Me ha caído muy bien. Pues vamos a ver qué piensa de aquí a allá. It's hard not to feel bad for Mike given how he's been treated, but at some point he's got to take some responsibility for what's going on. If he doesn't like it, which he clearly doesn't, he needs to just leave. But if he continues to put up with it knowing it's a transactional relationship, and knowing that she's not that into him for anything other than his money, he's going to have no one to blame but himself when the inevitable happens. Unsurprisingly, next up, things reach a cataclysmic climax. So if you don't want to miss the pair's ultimate showdown, please feel free to subscribe down below so you can catch that video as soon as I upload it. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.